I'm Tom Robinson. I'm going to be playing at King Tut's on Sunday, the 29th of October, to mark the 40th anniversary of my debut single, 2468 Motorway, by the modestly named Tom Robinson Band. People have been saying, when are you going to come and play that old material from 77, 78 again? And I've been going, no, I'm a modern artist, I've made 20 albums, I, you know, I, I don't, I'm not defined by my past, I don't want to be a nostalgia act. I've been fighting it, and I just thought, if I don't do it now, 40 years on, when am I going to do it? If not now, when? If not me, who? And there aren't any TRB tribute acts out there, so it might as well be me and my modern band paying tribute to those old players and trying to do as much justice to the material as we can. The album Power in the Darkness came out as a 10-track album and didn't have any of the singles on it. Now, that looks like madness at this remove in time, but at the time, the Sex Pistols had just put out an album that was just their four singles, the four B-sides and two bits of padding. And so everyone was furious with the Pistols for cheating the fans who'd already bought the singles. So we said, we won't be like that. We'll, be, we'll really respect the fans. We won't put any singles on it. It'll be 10 new tracks. So we did. We put 10 brand new tracks and everyone went, where's the singles? So people ended up buying the American import that had all the singles on a separate EP uh, bundled with the album and we were accused of ripping the fans off anyway. So this time around we're going to do the UK version of the album, the 10 tracks, and then that's the first set. And then we come back for the encores and play the early singles, uh, you know, if there's any kind of energy or voice left at the end of the night. Uh, so you will get 2468 Motorway, you will get Don't Take No for an Answer, you will get My Brother Martin, Glad to be Gay, um, and uh, possibly I shall be released as well. So you get the full Monty on this show, and for once, not a single song later than 1978 will be played on the stage in the course of the night. Some of those old songs, you know, were complaining about injustices at the time or the situation at the time. Um, conditions may stay the same, circumstances change. So you don't want those songs to become kind of museum pieces. So a song like Power in the Darkness, you have to update it year by year. And uh, certainly we'll be, doing, <laughs> we'll be doing the very up-to-date version of Power in the Darkness to conclude the album. It's the closing track. Um, and a song like Glad to be Gay, again, you know, it doesn't want to become a museum piece. Um, and I remember the terror of uh, first playing that on stage at the Apollo with a 15-foot drop off the stage and this packed audience of Glaswegians kind of eyeballing us and we're thinking, oh, how are they going to react to Glad to be Gay? And they sang every word of the song all the way through. I couldn't believe it. It was a wonderful vote of confidence to get at the time and it's just great to kind of bring it back here again all these years later. The bizarre thing is that a song like Glad to be Gay looked like commercial suicide at the time. Uh, and everyone's saying, you're cutting your throat, you'll never have a career, you'll never work again. And yet all these years later, that is the one song that has signified for people, that people remember as having mattered at the time. And people still come up to me and thank me for having done the song. And uh, I think just in terms of general civil liberties, uh, the, the right to be yourself, punks got it because punks were different and they got it from people who, who hated anyone who was different. And so you didn't have to be gay to find the song a, a kind of anthem, just like you could sing uh, Public Enemies uh, Fight the Power or James Brown Say It Loud and Black and I'm Proud, whether or not you were. King Tut's is kind of so famous for that kind of audience performer relationship that it just seems the perfect place to finish the tour. I think King Tut's actually has an international reputation rather than, you know, certainly across the UK. And um, if you're looking for that kind of thing where we're playing the 100 Club in London uh, to kick off, then we're going to end up at King Tut's. It seems completely appropriate and along the way we'll play to anyone that will have us.